My name is Anthony Reyers, I'm 31 years old and I happen to be born with Nori disease. Most of all, I'm just a guy who likes music, who likes to connect with other people and who likes to enjoy life. Nori disease is a tiny little defect in the X chromosome. Basically, it means that only guys get it. And my mutation is really, really tiny. It's even tinier than other people with Nori's disease, but the consequences are definitely there. I'm born blind, and with blind, I don't mean legally blind. I mean actually completely 100% blind, I would say maybe even more blind than love itself. And also it makes me lose my hearing over time. It's something that I only know since I was 18 years old. Before that, they always told me, oh yeah, you're fine, you're just blind, but your hearing is fine. And then they told me that it wasn't fine. And first I thought it was because of the music. Music is a very important part of my life. And maybe, I don't know, maybe I put the music too loud at some points in time. And that's why my hearing was basically degrading over time a little bit. But um, on 1 February, I was sitting in my own room and I was not listening to music and suddenly I hear my left ear completely blacking out and then only a really loud beeping noise, screeching I would say, so loud that it would go over the loudest noises. Even if I would play music at full volume, I would still hear it. And I knew that it was not normal. And then that's when I went on Wikipedia. I actually found what Nori disease really does. And it's like blindness from birth, hearing loss later in life from 18 years old approximately. And then for some people also, you know, there's some other difficulties as well with seizures and cognitive development. It's, it's like a very serious thing. And even my parents didn't know it. So suddenly I had to face the fact that I would go and lose my hearing in time and that at some point I would not hear anything anymore and I would not be able to do my biggest passion in music of course. That was very weird because I thought I was going to be scared and afraid and like that my world would end and stuff like that. But weirdly enough, the human mind is sometimes a very powerful and strange thing and it didn't really happen like that. What happened is that everything became more intense and more vivid. The happy moments where I would be, you know, having a drink with somebody, having a nice hug with someone or just enjoying myself in nature. And also the moments where things wouldn't go really well. Uh, became very intense and stressful too. And that sometimes does happen because these sudden hearing loss attacks like the one that happened before, including a lot of tinnitus and a lot of you know, distortion and of course less hearing, they kept on happening and they are increasing in frequency. And when that happens then, you know, it's definitely a very scary event and it it's like immediate panic, like what's going to happen now? What am I going to lose now? Most of the doctors actually tell you, OK, you just have to live with it because there's no cure. You can't do anything. You just have to watch it go away. And um, that's essentially what I'm doing. But at least I found a team of people who know there is some damage control treatments that I can do to minimize the damage and like reduce inflammation. And every time that happens. Uh, I need to go to a hospital and get that done to me immediately. It's like ramming a needle through your eardrum. It's not the nicest procedure. Go back home, get to hospital immediately and now I'm in treatment. Luckily it seems to be working pretty okay but uh, it's always always very scary to deal with that. But it doesn't really 
inhibit me to enjoy life. It just makes me more grateful for the stuff I can still do, for the things that I can still live, for the people that I can meet, and for the dreams that I can chase. Because chasing dreams is something that I have as my main motto of life and something that I also do in, I would say, it still sounds weird when I say it, but my work. It was uh, first a childhood dream, then a hobby, and then now it's my profession and it's being a DJ, being a producer of electronic dance music. It's something that I've really wanted to do since I was about nine years old and I had my first radio receiver. Radio is something that I'm really, really passionate about as well. And if I travel, I always take a radio with me and, you know, figure out what stations are in my destination. And I actually got to the point where I stumbled upon some dance radio stations and dance radio programs and I heard like the floating sounds of melodies and beats in my ear for the first time and I was like, okay, I'm hooked now. I, this, is, this is what I want to do with my life. Radio and music. I started mixing for myself, then for the radio, and then I met my other half, Xander van Dommelen, which is part of our duo project, Xijar and Pitch. And I started to produce together with him and actually make our own tracks. And thanks to him, things started to really, really get on another level because we complement each other really, really well. After a few club gigs here and there, COVID hit and it was done with clubbing, but my dad had a really interesting idea and I was like, can you like put a webcam right in front of your face, play like that while people can see you? I think we're living in a visual world. And at first I was like, yeah, well, that's not really my thing, but you know, why not? I'm bored. It's locked down. And suddenly a lot of people came over and that's how the whole thing with Twitch streaming started. Twitch is a platform where people can stream live, whatever they do. It's often games, but also people stream while they're producing music or playing DJ sets. And that's what I still do nowadays. And um, luckily that really, really gave a, a boost to our career as a DJ. We are Chicharo and Pitch. And together with you, we are chasing dreams. That's why right now I can play some really, really cool festivals, travel the world pretty much, and it is nothing but my dream come true. And for me, it showed that it is possible to do whatever you want. Or when you're in a wheelchair or when you're blind, deaf, it doesn't really matter. You can do, there are of course limitations, but you can do whatever you want and you can push the limitations very, very far if you want badly enough, if you have good people around you and if you create the opportunities that you need for yourself. And I want more people to be able to have these opportunities because I think that there's so many, so much talent, both in the blind community and just all around the world. And that's why I want to take you on a journey with me across multiple destinations, looking at the challenges, but also looking at the successes, looking at the limitations, but also how to deal with them. This is why I want to show you how I can see the world, live the world and make the world through music. Welcome to my home, guys. Let's get ourselves some good morning water.
Well, as you can see, my home is actually a pretty common home. It's a flat just here in the middle of the city. There's nothing much special about it, except for the location. It's pretty close to the station, which is nice because that means I can, you know, get away really fast and I have easy access to most, most other cities here in Belgium and to the airports, which I very much love. But um, other than that, it's pretty normal. There is no fancy adjustments needed for blind people to live. And um, yeah, just a, a nice cozy place to live here. The only thing that I sometimes use is um, technology, uh, mostly on my phone to check out some things and if I don't find what a certain package is or what a certain thing is then the phone often has the solution and um, I would say the only problem really about being blind and living alone like I do is that you sometimes lose things and you don't have eyes to f figure out immediately where they are so maybe I should show you guys how I work with my phone but where is my phone? See? I knew this was gonna happen. Where the hell did I leave my phone? I would say my house is a mess, but it's not that orderly either. Here we go, a bunch of stuff. Maybe I'll put it in there. I don't think so. And we have a GoPro. No, not a phone. Maybe in one of my bags here. I think I have. Wait, was this? Oh, no, that's not. That's that's an old hotel card. I think. Uh, what about this one? Nope. Nothing. And maybe I left it in here somewhere. I've been traveling a lot lately and I didn't even unpack because it's not really useful to be honest. Um, oh, I just left it here yesterday before I went to sleep, who knows. Ah, and there we have it. Ta-da! Five minutes of my life lost because I had to search for it. Welcome to the blind life. So I found my phone and my phone is really the most important item that I have in this house when it comes to technology. I also have Google Home, which I can uh, put music on a bit like Alexa, but my phone is really the most important thing. Skype, 26 new items. On my phone, there is um, what we call voiceover. It's a standard utility that comes with, uh, you know, like every iPhone, you can access it from settings and then accessibility, and it changes the way that your phone uh, works. And first of all, it reads out everything that you touch on the screen, which is very important because it means that whenever an app is developed right, you can actually really have an idea about what you're doing and also really keep in touch with all social networks like WhatsApp and, and stuff like this. For example, here, if I touch my home screen... Skype, 26 new items. Weather. Skype, 26 new items. Health. Weather. What settings? Do WhatsApp. And I find WhatsApp. And then, instead of, you know, just uh, touching it once, I can just double tap anywhere on the screen now, and it will open WhatsApp. As a blind person in 2023, and especially a blind person with hearing loss, you always rely on technology. Technology is so 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 important i would say that where a phone is really nice to have as a normal person many people will claim it's essential and they're addicted to it and i can understand that because i guess i am myself it is actually essential for us because it enables so many possibilities we can talk about gps but also apps where you can scan um, you can scan what's in front of you and it will tell you everything. 
There's also the rise of AI now, which can also be used to make our life easier. For example, ChatGPT can now also analyze images. And of course, in my case, there is DJing and production. It's, in general, and especially when it comes to music, not a one fight when it comes to technology. Technology is not always accessible. Most DJ software and most production software is not really accessible at all. It's just a blank screen for us because, of course, we cannot see the screen as sighted people would do. We can see them through screen readers and braille displays. Screen readers are pieces of software that read the contents of the screen out in speech form and braille displays can also display braille content. Uh, it's like a refreshable braille content that can be displayed and we can read in braille. But not all apps are readable by screen readers. They need to be developed and coded correctly and all buttons in the app need to actually have a name because otherwise they're just called button, button and button or even worse, just nothing at all. And especially when it comes to people who create music apps and, and companies who do that, they never think that there might be blind folks over there that want to DJ, who want to produce music with computers. When you think about a blind musician, you think about a piano tuner or a piano player or somebody who plays another instrument, but somebody who is creating electronic music or works with computers to create music doesn't really come to mind very often. And it's very, very difficult to entice big music software companies, Pioneer, Ableton, so on, to actually do something about accessibility. Luckily, though, there are some blind developers who are so ingenious to actually create some apps, some scripts and plugins that you hook into existing software that make it accessible for us to use or at least more or less accessible. It's not an ideal solution and it comes with a lot of challenges, but it works. Luckily there are some blind people who made scripts and plugins for us and now I can actually do my thing and I hope to meet some of them later on in this series of episodes where you can follow me in my life. Now in uh, the studio I have actually uh have Xander here virtually with me because we work together, of course, uh, virtually since he's living in Canada. And we do that with a really interesting software that does high quality audio and video from uh, his studio to mine and vice versa. And that's how we work together. So, and now Xander should be here. Hey, Xander. Yes, I'm here. <laughs> All the way from Canada. All the way from Canada. It's so nice uh, to have you here virtually. So, we're going to work on a new tune that we're working on i think yep yeah it's already one that that's new already there progress. for quite a while mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It, yeah it's, it's not exactly new anymore but no <laughs> but it's not the original <laughs> melodic idea of okay. looking at <laughs> i think it was 2008. so yeah i don't have that much yet in terms of actual mm -hmm. proper effects or engineering or arrangement, but I'll yeah. play a little bit from the intro. Yeah, I'm really here. curious about that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I kind of copy pasted some stuff from the old project, and there's some new stuff. And there's some stuff that can be like turned off. Or <laughs> Usually, what I do is I start a track, as in I, I compose melody, chord progression and things like these, and the basic building blocks. Because yes, even though it's dance and beat rich music, our tracks are really melody rich most of the time. And then I send that to Xander, and Xander goes into his studio and finishes the track and lets me listen in. So I can give constant feedback and give my ideas while he's pushing the buttons on his end in Canada. And it works fine for us, and we meet each other sometimes a few times a year. Uh, hopefully we can meet each other also here in uh, the episodes that are to come. And then we work together on music as well. 
but normally most of our tracks we finish them all the way digitally. Aside from production, I really like to do a lot of other things. Like I, I really like hanging out with friends and I like to be discussing about everything as uh, the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy says it. The universe, what was the Universe, life and everything, yeah. I like to discuss about life, the universe and everything with people. That's one of my favorite pastimes. Interestingly enough, when I'm not on festivals, I'm not that much of a raver. I just like the very simple things. Having a drink, talking to people, spending time with those that are dear to me, and um, just enjoying time. Being a blind person also with hearing loss in Belgium is, I would say it's not a breeze, but it's also not awful either. There are definitely places uh, in the world where being independent is not as easy. and I. I plan to take you to a few of those later on in our journey. But here in Belgium you luckily have some traffic lights that make noise and sometimes there are guidelines on the floor that guide you. But in the end you definitely have to do it with you, your cane, your wittiness and your willingness to find other people to actually help you around if you lose your way and that's really not a shame as well. Good. Good. Long it's but nice day. So yeah, but yeah. Uh, already do have uh, some. It's a bit rainy summer here in Belgium. Yeah. We're still gonna find them. Ah, uh, right? let's let's go chill at my home, bro. Yes. Let's, uh, let's follow see. me. You Wait. follow. You follow me. So what did you do today, bro? Uh, I uh, saw a very nice friend of Italy again. And he put you on the wrong train. Yes, yes, that was that was nice fun. But uh, you know, I can't expect him to know the Belgian traffic by heart. Even some uh, <laughs> sighted people were confused. So yeah, whatever, bro. That was chaos. What happens? What about you? Uh, what did I do? Uh, I went to treatment in hospital like usual these days. But, um, yeah. Oh no 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 we're not too far yet. Okay. I am uh, Yusri and um, I'm Anthony's best friend, or that's what I what he always says. So, <laughs> um, but I do believe it uh, through all the moments that we already had because uh, we know each other for a very long time. So my name is a. Uh... Pieter Bakkaert, born in the year 1985, so almost 38 years old, living in Scherpenheuvel, Belgium. And I think I met Anthony in the year 2017. I know Anthony, I think 21 years now. And uh, the first experience I had with that guy was to be just coughed with him, next to him in a cowboy camp. And uh, that, was, that was, I mean, it was our way to start talking and we had to do a lot of uh, tasks together. And if we were not doing this, we were not uh, progressing in that funny camp uh, slash game that we were playing back then. And then I remember that we never stopped uh, talking that camp. We, we, we talked about uh, how the technology with robots was going. Uh, lots of laughing. Both of us were going to a party to St. Niklas. I think it was a uh, Trans Family Belgium, Trans Classics or in private or something like that. And he needed a ride and I was traveling from where I lived to St. Niklas. And where Anthony lived, that was uh, yeah, on the course of going there. So I picked him up 
we started chatting and it ended up in a wonderful evening, a wonderful night, uh, beyond expectations. And yeah, that's where the friendship started off and it never dropped ever since. The coolest thing I experienced with Anthony, uh, it's hard to choose one because uh, I, I found it already amazing that we, uh, for example, spent five days together with uh, five other blind friends as well just in manchester and we didn't need anybody we just booked an airbnb we walked around the city we went to festivals all by ourselves um, but then at the same time um, teaching people about how to be as independent as possible tell us all what you did today in the chat <laughs> i really want to know it i'm very very curious i'm also not sure if uh, Pancho is listening, but dude, if you're doing... So the very first time Anthony asked me, hey, I need to go to the bathroom. Okay, no problem, let's go there. How do we do this? Well, I go first and I follow you. Okay, so we walk in. So Anthony walks into the bathroom. You had um, 20 guys or 25 guys just hanging around, acting all crazy. And they were coming like Anthony and he was like, oh man, what the f did you take? What a nice pill. I also want a pill like that. Come on, give it to me. I want it. And Anthony says like, no, 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 it, it, it's okay. It's okay. No, man, what stuff did you take? I also want it. And they said, no, Anthony, no, it, it's, it's okay. It's okay. And then, then, yeah. And then he said, but also I said, yeah, but he's blind. And then we're like, what the f He's blind for real or what? Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. He's blind. He didn't take anything. He's just like that. And then it was the sea of Moses that went open and he could go to the bathroom and all hospitality and all freedom that he wanted. But in the end, what's the funny story? Yeah, you just had to be there. I cannot explain it or re-explain it. You just had to experience it. But you know what? Maybe we can try that one again in the next festival. <laughs> that after a night of partying, he thought that the trunk of the car was actually the door where he had to get in. But he climbed almost in the trunk and I had to say with another friend, no, no, Anthony, that's not, that's not where you need to go. In the things that Anthony um, excels in as a friend, being um, very intelligent, very spot on and not afraid to say something out in the open, which results in hilarious uh, conversations, hilarious situations and adventures that you would not even expect. And that's something that's unique with Anthony and that basically happens every single time, whether it's a small, small event or a huge explosion of events, doesn't matter, but it always happens. He is like uh, my counterpart, so I'm the more impulsive, uh, cr crazy guy and he's uh, the, the, the very knowledgeable, he's also crazy, but in, in another way, it's hard to explain, but every time I have the feeling when I come here that I learn something. Uh, from him and he, he's learning something from me so we give each other something and it's going very you know passively we don't we don't focus on it it's just happening Man, this chicken is really, really nice. 
I mean, I wish I could taste it, but I take something very vegetarian this time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I do remember we came here quite a lot of times. Um, I lost count. When, you were when I was studying. So, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes. So it's nice to be back here again. It's really, yeah. Uh, and as always, the food is good. When is the last time you have been here? With you, last time, I think. <laughs> Years <laughs> ago. A long time ago. And normally the terrace is really nice outside, but uh, yeah, you know, weather. Yeah, and also there's like this crazy festival outside. Yeah, yeah. We should go after that one maybe to take a look. <laughs> <laughs> to Definitely. see what's going on. Mm. So uh, what about the UK tomorrow? Um, you have to wake up early? Yeah, wake up early like at 7 and then um, fly that. <laughs> Um, fly that um, 12. So you fly over Charleroi? Yeah. Okay. And then we're gonna see um, like a classical concert. Oh wow! Like a classical concert that uh, where they do like um, trans songs in classical versions. That's really interesting. Because. Um, I mean, it was not really comparable, I guess then, but I really did love the acoustic uh, above and beyond tours. Yeah, yeah, they're good. Uh, this is indeed a bit different, but... Um, it's pineapple. And there you have it. This was a glimpse in my normal daily life. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, definitely know that no matter if you're blind, no matter if you have another disability or other problems in your life, your only limit is your own imagination and it's always worth chasing dreams. Let's go for that and let's take you on a journey in the next episodes across my travels in Europe and outside Europe, in clubs, with promoters, in hotel rooms, in nature, having meaningful experiences with people and just having a taste of what life could be like. The good, the bad and the ugly. The challenges, the solutions, the limitations and the boundary pushing. Everything will be there and I hope to see you in the next episode.